see them there dressed in black and orange as always. Coached by Michael Shaw in his second season running the club. They're also 0-1, as I mentioned. After a 2-1 loss to Class AAA newcomer Baldwin, there are 11 teams in the class again. Baldwin went up, moved up, as part of the PIHL's promotion and relegation formula, while the Butler Golden Tornado are now down in AA. So each team in Class AAA will play each of the other teams two times, making 20 total games. But last week, the, uh, the Blackhawks couldn't get much offense going, and that was a problem for them last year, too. You might recall if you follow the PIHL. In terms of goals per game, they scored just over two. That was 10th out of 11 teams. But they allowed the fourth fewest goals out of 11 teams. So Bethel Park, traditionally under their former coach, Jim McVay, was defensively stout. They continued it last season, even though they didn't have too much offensive punch. Last year, they squeaked into the playoffs as the eighth seed before losing two, as I mentioned, Peters Township in the Penguins Cup quarterfinals on Neville Island, five to one. And the season series last year was split in the regular season, a pair of four. He's going to be wearing a sticker on their helmet for the entire season, number 55, in the words, Jimmy D. The organization and the league will be honoring the life and memory of Dame James D'Angelo, who left us unexpectedly on July 4th. James always had a smile on his face and loved by his family, friends, teammates, and coaches. He will be missed by everybody, but will never be forgotten. Please bow your heads for a moment of silence in honor of James D'Angelo. Thank you very much. The two teams are ready for action. Game number two of the season and uh, preparing to go for win number one. Both teams very early on at the bottom of the Class AAA standings with records of 0-1. Again, this is Matt Geica broadcasting not from South Point, PA for once. I am on a remote location. I'm here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where my family and I have relocated. But thanks to the tech ingenuity of Todd Kazarowski, and also the generosity of the PT Hockey Board. We're doing some remote broadcasts this year. Hey, the rest of the sports world has done it over the past, what, 18, 19, 20 months, however long the pandemic has gone on. So why not us? And thanks again to uh, Brian Mitchell and Alan Saunders of BergHockey.com for carrying the games. But uh, once again, 10 Band TV, 10 Band Productions, and Todd Kazarowski helping put me on the air and bring my voice to you as uh, we call the game. So keep in mind, bear in mind, that I am not actually there, but I will do my best. And with a high def screen in front of me, presented by Todd from back at Princescape Arena, I'm looking forward to an excellent broadcast here tonight. Okay, we're looking at the two teams at center ice right now. Peters Township in its traditional home white jerseys with the red pants and black trim, red helmets, and Bethel Park in its traveling black jerseys with the orange and the white trim. Opening face-off just moments away. I mentioned a first-of-its-kind broadcast here on PetersHockey.tv and BergHockey.com. The puck is dropped. Kazarowski jousting there with uh, the captain of the Bethel Park Blackhawks, Jaden Teets, and the Blackhawks will shoot in and chase after it as the first period has begun. 17 minutes on the first period clock and ticking, and Bethel Park attacking the goal down to our left. Peters Township, the one to our right. Play goes in behind the... Peters Township net. We'll get the starting goaltenders to you in just a moment. As Kazarowski, Caden Kazarowski, will poke this one out through to center. Cassiola going to the net, tries to take this pass, but it's knocked away to the side wall and then shoved right at the side of the net. Looking over his shoulder is the Bethel Park goaltender, but here are the Blackhawks settling things down and breaking them out to center ice. Just less than a minute into this one as Peters Township will go to work here. This is Cassiola, Luke Cassiola. The senior got plenty of action 
last year, 13 games and nine total points as an icing call is whistled against Peters Township, bringing the faceoff back down to the left as you watch on your device screen. We expected to see Nolan Hilbert, the junior, get the start here tonight, but just want to confirm that. He wears number 29 in goal for PT. And here is Peters and Cooper Slavin on the chip-in play. Behind the net, Ryder Mertens, his third varsity season, just a junior. Yes, he played a full year as a freshman, and he had 15 points in 18 games last season. Peters Township returns 11 from last year's squad, which finished second in Class AAA. And again, was a well-rounded outfit. Reaching out is Austin Malley. Had the only goal against Pine Richland last week. Malley stick handling in the corner with it. Malley takes a bump, makes the play, in behind the net. Now he wants to get it back and couldn't pull the trigger on the one-time attempt. The pass came from Cooper Slavin. Out to the point, and it's Mertens wristing one. That's off a of body and deflects over to the near side corner. Mertens. Those strong stick handling moves. The backhand pass out to the line. Having some trouble there was Colin Kimberling, but he kept it alive for Peters Township. Now Malley, backdoor play, and deflected just wide of the net by Slavin. Good chance for that line. And now Slavin goes off for a change as Peters Township attempts to keep the puck alive in the offensive zone. 15 minutes to go in the first period, no score. Malley a turning drive that's weakened on the way and gloved down uh, by, I believe that's Dominic Zavola of Bethel Park, number 33. If so, interesting story for Zavola. Didn't play for the Blackhawks last year. Sat out the COVID-19 affected season, but he did play two years ago. I remembered his name, and I was pretty sure he was a returner, but yes, he did not play in 2020-21, but he did play in 2019-20. So Zavola, the senior, inserted back in there. Luke Duda also returned. So a couple of senior goalies for Bethel Park and head coach Michael Shaw. Blackhawks on the forward check here, but now Peters Township and Kobe Ringwald will wheel it around to this near side, turning and cleared in the direction of William Tomko, the freshman. A couple of freshmen dressed last week at Pine Richland for Rick Tingle's Indians. Carson Alexander with his head up. Makes a nice lead pass on the far wing, but a strong check there dislodges the puck. And Bethel Park's Aiden Gorman is on top of it now. Peters Township, though, closing off that end board attempt to swing it around and get it out. But now Bethel Park does clear the puck out to the neutral zone. No score early. Both teams managed just one goal in their opener. Bethel Park losing 2-1 to one to Baldwin. I mentioned the Highlanders fresh on the scene in AAA hockey. So we welcome Baldwin. And if you're unfamiliar with the process, it's all merit-based how teams go up and down. It's not based on the size of teams or size of schools, which is refreshing, I think. Back to the line. Bethel Park Smiga will dump it down. Bouncing puck in front of the net. One try, a second opportunity, and the puck is frozen underneath the goaltender, Hilbert. Nothing further from that as Bethel Park got its first two shots, it appeared, on target. Could not convert from close range. Thank you so much for tuning in. Game number two, thanks to Matt Popchock for broadcasting last Thursday at the Barrel Ice Complex in Warrendale. It was terrific to hear his voice on a hockey call again. If you're a longtime PIHL follower, high school hockey in the area, uh, you know of Matt Popchock. He previously worked for the PIHL, calling games, including Penguins Cup action, down at what was then Consol Energy Center, now PPG Paints Arena. Loose puck in the Peters Township zone. It'll be Kimberling banging it off the sideboards. Could not get it out. Blackhawks go to work here. Skating laterally with the puck is Smiga. Threw it right in front of the net and right through the blue paint, but no one home for the Blackhawks. On the chase for it is uh, Luke Henderson for Bethel Park. We've heard his name before in the past. Henderson and uh, Bethel Park player down in the middle of the ice. I was about to give you Henderson's numbers. He played 19 games last year and an apparent injury to Ben Gunther, senior veteran player. Played all 20 last year for Bethel Park. Scored 10 points. He's up on his Skates now as he rises to one knee and then back onto both blades. Member of the medical staff out to attend to him, but uh, he decided to pass on that, and he's back on the Bethel Park bench. Didn't see what happened as I was following the puck in the corner. So the faceoff will remain in the Bethel Park zone as the stoppage was caused by a Bethel Park player. Caden Kazaroski tried to 
Used the body to win that faceoff, but couldn't do it. Here come the Blackhawks now. Christian Strang fed it on far wing. It's in behind the Peters Township net again. And possibly a two-on-one here. Kazarowski catches up to it and shoots one. And that's off the glove of the goaltender. And deflected down back onto the rink. But it did go out of play. So another offensive zone draw coming up for Peters Township. And yes, it is Dominic Zavola, 33, confirming that in net for Bethel Park. Face-off happening quickly here. The referee's keeping the play moving. We started just a little bit past our usual 7 o'clock sharp opening face-off time, but uh, no harm, no foul there. Bethel Park going to work again. On the rush, shot goes wide from the right circle. Lurking in front, Colin Nebel for the Blackhawks, but it's turned over, and Kazarowski deep behind his net. Takes a look up ice and simply shoves it out to center. Picking up that loose puck is Luke Castiola, but his line mate Maxwell Kness was in over the line ahead of him. It's offside against Peters Township. It's part of a doubleheader tonight. Cannon McMillan, as usual, will uh, provide the nightcap. Cannon Mack taking on Pine Richland, the team that defeated uh, PT 8-1 to last week. So we'll see how Ken and Mack, which had a resurgent, resurgent season last year, can handle uh, what appears to be a strong Ram squad, at least strong offensively. Peter Township actually outshot Pine Richland last week, 39-28. to So let's not act like it was an anemic performance for Peter's Township. Just couldn't get uh, more than one to drop up in Warrendale. Cooper Slavin from behind the net. Slavin, number 26, taken out by his own teammate there. That was Smiga who toppled him. Or pardon me, uh, Ryder Mertens, rather. Mertens. Now Connor Murphy pinching up. It's a wrist shot. Just goes wide of the net from in close. Kimberling made it happen, and Malley had the follow-up chance. Cleared down by Bethel Park. That's icing against the Blackhawks. So Peters Township tilting the ice here. Not much action down to our left. And when it is down to our left, it moves quickly. Back to the right. Again, this is Matt Geica broadcasting from Grand Rapids, Michigan, remotely. Bringing you the action from South Point, PA. Through the miracle of the internet. Gotta love it. Slavin, dealing it back to the point. Arister on the way. That was deflected, and Zavola holds on to it. One thing I do remember about Dominic Zavola, he was a strong performer for Bethel Park. Usually a team that does not allow very many goals. It's hard to tell from some of the rudimentary stats available to us on the PIHL website, but we do know one thing. They're consistently among the league leaders in goals allowed per game. Don't know much about scoring chances or even total shots some nights, but just goals allowed, they're pretty darn good. Here's Gunther, who was injured. Now he takes the shot on his off-wing side, chest high there on Hilbert, and Hilbert kneels down to freeze the puck after making the save. That draws a round of applause from what's well, a nice crowd here. I'm sure a lot of the folks getting back into the rink for the first time in a couple of seasons if they sat it out last year. Due to the COVID-19 restrictions, there weren't that many people permitted in the building for most of the year. And Peters Township, in fact, played just 19 games. They never made up that final game on their 20-game slate. But here's PT. Losing control briefly. Christian Strang trying to make something happen. And a shot on the way from Aaron All is denied there by Hilbert. So Bethel Park pushing back. And they get an icing call to work with here too. 10.31 left in a scoreless first period. Peters Township at home against Bethel Park. Last week at Pine Richland, both goalies saw action for Peters Township. Kyle Thomas stopped 9 of 14. And Nolan Hilbert... Denied 11 of 14 in relief. Helping to calm things down a bit after the midway point of that game. They almost split the game 50-50. Did the two newcomers to the varsity level. Gunther drop pass for Bethel Park. Put it in the skates, though, of Matt Lucido. Couldn't make anything happen Could the Blackhawks. And Peters with the puck. Strong skating here from Kobe Ringwald. Escape to neutral zone. Ice. But then he has to go back forward. Carson Alexander helping to 
hold up Jaden Teets of Bethel Park legally on a strong shoulder check. The puck is still free, up for grabs. Reversal, and Caleb Kovac for Peters Township. Helps make a pass ahead, and on the move is Smiga. Smiga with some strong speed, pressuring a couple of Blackhawks and nearly poked it free for a partial breakaway. Smiga in hot pursuit again, for checking hard. Smiga the senior getting his first action in varsity competition. Under 10 minutes to play in the first period. No penalties yet. He had the one injury to Gunther, but nothing was whistled on that. And so we played five on five, and usually that's the way that Peters Township likes to do it. They drew the fewest penalties in AAA again last year. Most of their games are not very rough and tumble. They can be physical, don't get me wrong, but not a lot of penalties. Centering play here from Bethel Park's Luke Lawton, but that was broken up by Peters Township. And the clear for PT will stop short of the icing line. That'll force Jake Lang of Bethel Park to scoop it up. All 20 games played last year for Jake Lang, the senior defenseman. Back to Luke Lawton, also a senior, also a veteran of this level. He simply lifts it down the ice for an icing call, and we'll take it right back down to our right. Bethel Park lost four of its top seven scorers last year, plus their number one goalie, Zach Ott. So not quite as stung by graduation offensively as PT was. I mentioned Peter Township lost its top three scorers. John Camp and Dylan McElhaney, in fact, were among the top scorers in all of Class AAA. They were in the top five for most of the year. Another icing here against Bethel Park. 8.35 remaining in the first period. And I'll do my best to keep an eye on the out-of-town scores for you. Puck dropped and shot right on net. Zavola made the save. To the line and Ringwald. Ringwald, a familiar name for those who follow Peters Township Hockey. We tend to see the families rotate through, and now it's Kobe's turn to step to the forefront. Tanner Ringwald was a goaltender for the Indians, you might recall. Luke Cassiola on the chase, and the puck battle win for Peters Township. Lofted pass up ahead, but Kness won't be able to catch up to this one before it goes beyond the end line for another icing. So a little disjointed at the start of this one, especially in the past few minutes. These are the only two games, in fact, tonight in AAA, so I won't be able to bring you any out-of-town scores unless you really want me to get into AA and single-A. Usually I don't on these broadcasts. Loose puck in the slot, a backhand chance for Gunther. He's cleaned out with another check, and he's hurt again. Gunther is really struggling in this period and probably playing hurt. He valiantly tried to take that shot as he fell down to the ice on the clean check, but couldn't get it on target. Here's a good move right in front, and Slavin... Did he score? I believe that puck was held out by Zavola. Oh, goodness, what a save. Dominic Zavola stretching out. Slavin thought he had a tap in on the back door. Ryder Mertens made the pass, and that top line for the Indians of Slavin, Malley, and Mertens buzzes again and very nearly comes up with the opening goal just like it did last week in the opening minute at Pine Richland. Malley, big number 98, leans in. 14 points in 19 games last year as a sophomore, impressively done from Malley. So Malley and Mertens, both juniors, and uh, Slavin, the senior on that top offensive line for Rick Tingle's team. Turned over, though, and an attempted shot from Strang was interrupted on the way. Not quite a block, but Peter Township was strong defense. In front of its goaltender, Nolan Hilbert, who is perfect so far, obviously. Both goaltenders looking at a clean sheet in front of him. Ringwall dishing it back. Carson Alexander, a pirouette one way and a pirouette the other way, trying to find some room. And he does, slamming it off the sideboards. No frills there, just wanted to get it out. There's a timer in most defensemen's heads that eventually goes off. This is Ringwald trying to run the gauntlet, and he's denied, but not before drawing a penalty. And the shot on the follow-up chance goes wide of the net. Peters Township about to take advantage of this one and go on the power play. 
A wonderful carry move from, I believe that was Ringwald from his defense position. If not, I apologize. Like I mentioned, I am watching on the screen just like you are. Penalty to number 18 of Bethel Park, Joe DePasquale. And Peter Soundship puts his power play on the ice. Did not score last week at Pine Richland. Alexander shooting Zavola the shoulder save, and it deflects over to the far side wall. Prying it free here is Peters Township, trying to set up shop. Ringwald out at the point. Ringwald dishing it off. Slavin now a turning chance from in close, and a save made by Zavola, and a strong one on Ben Kovac. Peters Township's going to change up its power play unit. Camden Martin was out there, too, for PT. First-year varsity player, number 91. Now it's Mertens, Malley, and Slavin with Alexander and Ringwald at the points. Peters Township on its first power play of the game. PT's power play last year, 17% conversion rate, 7 out of 11 teams. They win this faceoff. Mertens did the job there. Wrist shot from Ringwald didn't get through, and Mertens was knocked down in front, and the Blackhawks clear the puck all 200 feet. Out to hold that one up was Hilbert. Charging ahead, Ryder Mertens. He's a one-man zone entry. Mertens has it. Centered it in front, and it bounces around a couple of times. Slavin got a hack at it. Still free in the blue paint. Zavola pokes at it, and it caroms over the near side boards. Ringwald down the wall. Taking this pass, Ringwald here. Faking the slap shot. Got that puck from Malley. Now he gives it over to Malley. Big number 98. O'Malley, or pardon, Malley to Mertens. Malley on the overlap here as Bethel Park broke up the return pass. Here's Mertens shooting, and that goes off a stick. Strong defense from Nolan Plasio of Bethel Park. Alexander to Mertens. 33 seconds to go on the penalty for tripping. Mertens behind the net. Slows the pace down. Ringwall to Alexander, right circle shot, and Zavola never saw it, it bounces over the net. Hit something, now a one-time attempt from Mertens, and he fanned on it in the slot, good opportunity. But he keeps the puck alive, does Mertens. Malley in the corner. Austin Malley swirling in behind the net, 4.45 to go in the period, six seconds left on the power play. Alexander wristing, and that's off the leg of Luke Henderson. It'll hop free into the corner, power play over. Bethel Park back to full strength. And a huge tie-up in the corner. Three-on-two manpower edge for Bethel Park in its own zone. Usually that defensive team gets a little more aggressive in those corner battles, and it pays off for Bethel Park as the Blackhawks get the clear. No icing here against Peters Township. It was shot in ahead of the red line. But Palacio could not clear it out for Bethel Park. Again, keeping it alive is Peters Township. But wrist shot attempt by Connor Murphy... That was blocked, didn't get through. Luke Cassiola makes a beeline for the front of the net, but couldn't get the pass there from Kazaroski as it was broken up by Strang of Bethel Park. Luke Henderson takes a look and skies it out of his own zone, relieving the pressure finally for the Blackhawks. They're hanging on a bit right now, are the Hawks, but still in a 0-0 game. They try to go on the attack. Jaden Teets. 16 points last season, leading returning score. Big tie-up in the corner. Puck comes loose right to the front of the Peters Township net and uh, ushered away by a couple of Indians. Cassiola takes a hack and at least clears the puck out to center. Bethel Park gets a full line change here. Completed. Sandwich hit in the corner. On PT's, or pardon me, Bethel Park's Aiden Gorman. That was Murphy, as well as Smiga, who got himself into the action, got his nose a little dirty. Attempted centering pass. Smiga has it for Peters Township, and he'll bounce one out to the red line, and picked up on the move now by Kness. Wrist shot, blocker save by Zavola. That was a strong shot, but Zavola had it read perfectly. It's one of those where, as a goaltender, you can... Get out on top of your crease, cut the angle down, and make it really tough for the attacker to find a corner. Wrist shot from Luke Lawton. That goes wide, bangs off the kick plate behind the Peters Township goal. 
2.27 to go in the first period. A chip down the ice. And chasing after it, Smiga for PT. Unable to find it. Good keep at the line. A bouncing puck in front. Give credit to Ryan McKenna for getting to that one. 52 for Peters Township. Another new face, new number in the lineup this year. And now McKenna takes this reversal play from Murphy. McKenna bouncing. Exit pass. And it comes in the possession of Bethel Park. Under two to play in the first. Flow starting to pick up now. Just as I say that, a whistle for an offside on Ben Kovacs' attempted pass up ahead. So Bethel Park, out of their returners, just a couple of defensemen, Jake Lang and Luke Henderson. So they'll be working in some fresh faces, just like Peters Township is on the blue line. PT returning Colin Kimberling, Carson Alexander, and Kobe Ringwald all in the lineup tonight. But that leaves the other half of the Blue Liners still getting their feet wet at this level. PT, as usual, has plenty of games before the holiday break, including two this week. They'll be at it again on Thursday. That's out at the Alpha Ice Complex. A wrist shot from a sharp angle from Bethel Park. That save was made. Loose puck out near the blue line and chipped right back in deep by Colin Neville. Number eight for Bethel Park. Here's 91 for Peters Township. Camden Martin. Some poise on the puck. Gave it back to the blue line. Now gets it right back on the left wing. Gaining the line. William Tomko. Try to go right back to Martin behind the net, but Indians can't make anything happen there. 40 seconds left in the first period. Dimitri Geronimos. A clear, but the Indians get right back on top of it. 30 seconds left in the first period. Malley overskated the four-checking effort. But Alexander keeps it alive. This is Slavin over to Malley. Shot it and a save by Zavola. Dominic Zavola. The only thing standing between PT and maybe a one or a two-nothing lead after one period, but... He's been sharp. Big 33 in net for the black and the orange. Wild shot from Alexander. Maybe just a dump in from the corner. It bangs off the wall and driven down the ice by Bethel Park. And that is down for an icing. 4.2 ticks remaining on the first period clock. One last chance for Peters Township to generate some offense. Before the quick break between the first and the second periods. Not really an intermission. I guess in the truest sense of the word it is. But only a couple of minutes. We get the ice resurfacing between the second and third periods in PIHL hockey. Bethel Park wins this draw. Good job from Nolan Plasio to just sit on that puck in the corner and exhaust the rest of the remaining seconds. So after one period here at Princecape Arena in South Point, Pennsylvania, your score, Peters Township, nothing. Bethel Park, nothing. The broadcast coming to you from two locations. I mentioned the pictures from the Princecape Arena, as usual. And the descriptions by me, Matt Geica, coming from Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, Todd Kazarowski on the switches there. He's got a crew on site, including some students from Peters Township High School. Getting some real on-the-job experience here. Last shot count I saw for the first period was 11. Sounds about right, but that was with 637 remaining in the frame. So I guess we'll see if they update the uh, the live score on PIHLHockey.com in a timely fashion. Only one penalty on the board in that first period. That was Joe Pasquale, two for tripping at 10.23, but Peters Township could not capitalize. And I apologize to Kyle Thomas, the sophomore, is in goal for Peters Township. Uh, I mentioned sometimes tough to confirm from afar uh, who's in goal, but not Nolan Hilbert. It is Kyle Thomas. He's four for four for PT. In the opening frame. And uh, Thomas started last week. As far as I could tell from the box score. And gets the start again this week. Getting another look from head coach Rick Tingle. Okay, we're going to switch sides here for the second period of play. If you know hockey, you know that. As Bethel Park will attack down to our right. And Peters Township will now move to our left, hopefully. 
You see that banner behind the rink from this vantage point? Banners, plural. Uh, celebrating the program's 500 plus wins and also Peters Township's many division and postseason championships. It's a proud program and one of the biggest, in fact, all the way down to a middle school in all of Pennsylvania. And I have to imagine in the country it stacks up with most of them that are among the biggest. And PT's been a stalwart in Class AAA for many, many years. Trying to get back to that Penn's Cup championship game. They were there three straight seasons, winning the first time. Bethel Park now on the attack and a deflected shot that Thomas makes a save on. At least I think it was deflected. Jake Lang took the wrister from out near the point and it skipped in. Might have been touched. Maybe not. Either way, Kyle Thomas had the pad sealed down against the ice. No problem making that stop. 40 seconds into period number two. Also, a reminder to go to BergHockey.com. Pittsburgh Hockey Digest is your place for all your PIHL coverage, including great photos and these live broadcasts. The offerings continue to expand, including this first of its kind attempt here tonight, and so far so good, I think. Looks good on my end, I know that much. <laughs> Can't speak for those watching on the stream. A bouncing puck and a shot attempt from Colin Neville. That never got through. Neville and Aaron all buzzing around the slot. Trying to find a puck. Putting themselves in good position to at least create something and get on it. Here's a chance at the side of the net. Mertens with a hack. Now Malley with a backhand. That didn't get through. Two opportunities from the top of the blue paint for Peters Township. Neither one falls. So the offensive frustrations continuing a little bit here. 39 shots last week for Peters Township. They were in the double digits in the first period here tonight. Um, at least 11. In fact, yeah, it was 11 to 5 were the shots on goal in the first period. So, Peters Township up above 50 shots now, and just one goal has gone in so far on the season. Fortunately, it's early. Here's a rip shot that goes over the top from Maxwell Kness. Now Mertens behind the net. Kness, Mertens, strong on the puck, still has it. Now he'll center one. Turning to try to jam that in, Camden Martin. There's a huge pileup in the crease, waiting for a whistle. Is uh, the goaltender Dominic Zavola for Bethel Park? He never got one, but fortunately for him, his teammates ushered the puck out to center ice. Kimberling clips this pass ahead. It goes off a stick, no icing, and now center right out in front. Martin couldn't get it. Shot attempt from Kimberling that was fanned on partially. Kimberling again, good move on his backhand now. Cuts to his forehand, maybe one too many deeks. Well, he had an opportunity as he got into that precious ice between the circles, but he had one other move in mind. Maybe trying to make a pass there. He had a player open on the far side, didn't get the number. So it's Kimberling showing off the hands for sure, but he ices this puck, and uh, Peters Township will have to retreat for the faceoff back in its own real estate. It's also a big night in hockey Generally in Western Pennsylvania, the Penguins open up against the two-time defending champion Tampa Bay Lightning, and they're on ESPN for the first time in 17 years. For those of us of my age, I'm 36. Brings back memories, that old National Hockey Night theme. If we could borrow it for these broadcasts, I'd love that. I'm sure they wouldn't get us for copyright infringement. Anyway, I'll be watching that score throughout the night, so I'll update you on that one, too. I'm sure if you're watching this, you're probably a general hockey fan and most likely a Pens fan. Bounding shot from Jake Lang. That's sticked away by Kyle Thomas. No trouble. Thomas with the black pads. You don't often see black pads, but you know what? Speaking of the Penguins, Tristan Jari has black pads this season. I remember reading a couple of things saying that optometrists say that white pads are best because it attracts the eye of the shooter. It makes them want to shoot it at you or at least makes you look bigger. Here's a, a shot that gets through from the side angle, a sharp angle, in fact. But between those black pads is where that black puck can be found and Kyle Thomas has no trouble with it so much better start for him than last week building his confidence up but anyway back to my story you'll recall Mark Andre Fleury in his first couple of years in Pittsburgh had the bright yellow pads that he carried over from the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles of the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League and he dumped those when an optometrist in Ottawa sent him a letter Yes, we sent letters back then in the late 2000s, 14, 15 years ago, and told him that white pads were best. And 
He stuck with those at least for a while. Not sure what he's wearing in Chicago this year. Deflected shot from the point after another faceoff win from Bethel Park. Ben Kovac, though, couldn't get that one through. Bethel Park has been strong on the draws. I haven't been keeping track of it manually. Maybe I should because it feels like it's a, a dominant effort so far for the Hawks here on the road tonight at Prince Gape Arena. 13-13 to go in the second period. Three-man rush. It's a centering pass. Kazarowski in front. Score! No! It went off the post. Oh, my goodness. It was a celebration. And then <laughs> I want to say that was Kness. Yes, and he puts his stick up on his head. Either that hit the post or it was a save by Zavola. I'm not sure which. Either way, the puck carried right out in front. Luke Cassiola made a gem of a pass to him on the doorstep. And Kness, the left-handed shooter, had three goals last year. Couldn't polish it off. I apologize for the early call. I was looking at Kness when he shot it. It looked like an open net, and I think it was. But Peters Township will have to continue to grind away, looking for goal number one on this night and goal number two on the season and game number two. 13 minutes to go. Now they're putting all the pucks on goal. Every opportunity they get. That was Kazarowski that time from the sidewall, basically. Kazarowski behind the net. Hill center for Kness trying to make up for his earlier miscue, but that puck wouldn't behave for him in front. To the line. Ringwall gloves it down to keep it alive. Now he touches it on with his stick, but didn't get a lot on it. Kness at the blue line. Looking for Cassiola. That's broken up by Jake Long. Or Lang, pardon. Lang. The dish ahead, and the shot deflected out of play by Peters Township. 12-19 remaining in the second period, and we're still awaiting our first goal of the night. Matt Lucido will take the draw for Bethel Park against Ryder Mertens of Peters Township. Lucido chases after it as it bounded right to the side of the Peters Township goal. Out to the line. Drive from Luke Henderson. That got nothing but the boards. On the right wing, Luke uh, or Zach Mazzaconi lost the puck. Here come the Tribe now. Going to the net, reaching out for this pass was Malley, but he couldn't lasso it in. It was a three-man rush. Ended up being a two-on-one at the tip of the spear, though, with Cooper Slavin making that final dish. Slavin with the responsibility of playing first-line winger after six points in 18 games last season. Matt Lucido couldn't clear. Gloved down by Peters Township and uh, Ryan McKenna. Malley on his backhand after a forehand pullout move from behind the net. Now Mertens putting it into the mix. That didn't get through to the net. Malley with 11.20 left in the second period. Malley stick handling beautifully. Austin Malley lost the puck in his skates. A stick check from Luke Henderson at the last possible moment probably saved a prime scoring chance. Lucido one on two for Bethel Park. Lucido's shot. That was a strong one as he uh, got a little closer than Ryan McKenna would have liked, but Thomas made the save. McKenna pulls up, finds a man. Now it's cross ring to Martin. Camden Martin, 91. Long hair flowing from underneath his helmet. Put it in front of the net, and it's a score on the rebound. Martin jammed it toward the front, and Ben Kovac has scored for Peters Township. His first varsity goal. Congratulations to number 18. The sophomore connects after Martin's run to the cooker from the left wing side. 1-0 Peters Township with 10.45 to go in the second period. Ben Kovac on the sheet. First goal, first point at the varsity level, and here's a turnover. Maybe a chance for PG to make it two, but the snapshot goes high and wide over the net. Was that Kovac again? No, in fact, that was Jacob Smiga over on right wing. 17, not 18. Rambling back is all for Bethel Park, and a shot right into the chest of Thomas, and no further play from that. Aaron All got all of that, but the accuracy wasn't what he wanted. Right into the crest. That familiar Peters Township crest on the jersey of Thomas. Peters Township just kept kicking at that can and called a bit of a dirty goal, even though the move to the net by Camden Martin to set it all up was quite beautiful. 
Some speed, some jam. That formula leads to goal number one for Peters Township on the night. This wrist shot might have caught a piece of the iron. It was a fallaway drive from Matt Lucido. And yeah, he's <laughs> discouraged. I think that did catch the crossbar. One thing not being there, I'm not quite attuned to the sounds of the game. I can definitely hear everything going on, but sometimes those tinks off the iron are very subtle, and you have to be there to appreciate them. But uh, just judging from the reaction and well, the reaction of the goaltender, Thomas, as well as uh, Lucido, I'm going to say that was definitely some heavy metal. Knesset take the draw for uh, Peter Township. And it'll be Lucido for Bethel Park. And again, a win for the Blackhawks. Luke Cassiola tried to pull this one in at center ice and move in over the line, but he was offside. His teammate Kness couldn't escape the zone. Cassiola, one of a couple of power forward types. Guys well over six feet. Also Kazaroski, also Malley, whom I've mentioned a couple of times tonight. Cassiola, as a uh, first-year varsity player last season, uh, as a junior, had nine points in 13 games. Kazeroski had five, including four goals. Ryder Mertens had 15 points in 18 games. In fact, uh, he is the leading returning scorer for the Peters Township Indians, and PT about to go shorthanded. Matt Lucido drew the penalty, and uh, just like what we saw in the first period, an attacker moving down to our right, Restricted by the stick. And it'll be now time for the special teams to take over for both sides. Peters Township last year killed penalties at a rate of 84%, 6 for 11. They killed off all four last week at Pine Richland. Bethel Park's power play last year was a problem spot. 10th out of 11 teams in Class AAA, just 14.5% on the conversion rate for the Hawks. So definitely an improvement point for this coaching staff. A snapshot was deflected off the end boards. That was Placio taking it from the point. Placio calling for it and said the skip pass goes over to the near side for Henderson. Peter Township on it and a chip and a clear and maybe an opportunity to push the offense back. Cassiola goes to the middle. Here's a chance and a wrist shot. Stop made off Caleb Kovac's attempt. It was nearly another Kovac goal. This time, Caleb getting an opportunity shorthanded, killing penalties, and Cassiola put that puck on a platter for him as the Indians pursued their first shorty of 2021-22, but not to be. Zavola denied that, and Zavola's been strong tonight, to say the least. Snapshot from the left wing by Henderson. That missed everything. 8.41 left in the second period. This period moving a bit more smoothly than the first. Not only is it early in the season, but also when you haven't played for about a week, give or take. Sometimes you got to find those competitive feels, if you will. Everything's a little different when the adrenaline gets involved. It's not quite like practice. Puck still in the offensive zone for Bethel Park. Henderson skating toward the slot as his teammate Lucido wanted to pry it loose, and he did. Now Palacio swung it cross rink. Luke Henderson, a uh, desperate shot, really, from out near the blue line, falling back, and Thomas will easily pounce on that one. Kyle Thomas. Hasn't been heavily taxed so far, but... The shots he's faced, he's stopped. He's made all eight stops so far. 17 shots for Peters Township at the other end, and Zavola has stopped 16, of course. Wrist shot from Gorman as he cut toward the slot. That missed, too. Bethel Park's missed on a few of these prime opportunities to at least get pucks on goal, if not necessarily score. Got to hit the goaltender. It's Peters Township getting down to the final few seconds of the penalty. Bethel Park, one last rush, but it's not going to be with the power play anymore. PT's killed it off. And it's offside, so scuttle that one, too. We're back to full and even strength for both sides. Peters Township's Maxwell Kness is back on the ice after taking the hooking minor. Less than half the period to go. PT sitting on a 1-0 lead. 
always fun to see how these teams develop their identities. And at the high school level, especially when you have coaching consistency, you can usually tell. For instance, Seneca Valley is almost always going to be, under Anthony Rako, a really strong defensive squad. Bethel Parks carried it over from the Jim McVeigh era to the Michael Shaw regime. And like I said last year, also quite good in preventing chances. Peters Township usually does it all well. Usually a high-scoring squad as well as a team that doesn't give up much and a team that loves to play at five-on-five, five, both in terms of attacking and defending. So here are the Indians at center. McKenna, PT's number 52. Peters Township in the white, by the way, with the red helmets, in case you didn't know, in case you're joining us late. Bethel Park in the black and the orange. McKenna, long lead pass, using some geometry there to go off the boards, and the shot right into the breadbasket of Zavola, and nothing more from that after the drive from our goal scorer tonight, Ben Kovac. Kovac from Martin. The only goal the night reads. Fans from both teams in attendance or fans supporting both teams in attendance. As you'd imagine, these two old school South Hills rivals, they've been playing hockey against each other for a while. They'll play two more times this year. Last year was three counting the playoffs. Kazarowski couldn't pull in the centering pass from Cassiola. Luke Cassiola has shown a playmaking ability here in this game. I'm not sure I quite saw it last year. Another backhand from Bethel Park and another save from Thomas right into his glove. No trouble at all. And the stats back it up, what I was saying there about Cassiola. He had nine points, but seven of those were goals. Nothing wrong with that. Someone's got to score him, right? The most valuable talent in hockey is scoring goals. And he showed a, a knack for it. But he's made two outstanding passes so far tonight, and maybe a couple that I've missed as well. But two definitely to set up grade-A scoring chances, or possible scoring chances. Palmieri of PT. First time I've called his name tonight. Jacob Palmieri, the senior first-year varsity player. Laid a check, fell down, kept going, and helped the Indians clear the puck to center. 5.51 left. The whistle in the neutral ice area will lead to another face-off right there. Shots now 18-10. Bethel Park starting to creep back into that uh, competitive zone in that category. I'm sure they'd love a lot more, but Peters Township is playing pretty suffocating at the moment. Here's the 11th shot off the shoulder of Thomas on the drive from Aiden Gorman. Gorman's shown a nose for the net in this period. And another puck on net. So here come the Blackhawks a little bit. 531 remaining in the second period, and Thomas scoops that up. The draw will be from the left face-off circle. Bethel Park's Dimitri Geronimo is one of my favorite names to call. He's going to do the honors. The right-handed centerman against Mertens of Peters Township. Top line out for PT. Mertens in some trouble there, confronted by a couple of Hawks near the wall. But now Mertens keeps on going. Not always pretty, but if you just keep your legs moving and you don't give up on the play. You can win a lot of those 50-50 puck battles. Puck's in the skates of... One of the uh, Peters Township defenders didn't quite catch his number. It might have been Connor Murphy, in fact. But the shot goes wide from Bethel Park. Cooper Slavin hopping on the puck here in the corner. Mertens, blind pass there. It was more of a hopeful one, but the Indians keep it alive. Colin Kimberling, the chip to the corner, and it's Malley. So 89 went to 98. Malley wristing, and Zavola kicks it out to the corner. Best chance for Peters Township since the goal. Murphy wrister, and that goes off a leg. Penalty coming up against Bethel Park as the Blackhawks touch it up. Well, I thought it was. Maybe it's against Peters Township. I was pretty sure they had possession of the puck when the arm went up from one of the referees. Perhaps I was wrong. We hear some hooting and hollering from the fans there at Prince Scape. We'll see what goes on the board, if anything. Oh, 
I swore an arm was in the air. Yes, it will be a penalty against Peters Township and against Cooper Slavin. Two on the board on the home side. Bethel Park gets its second power play. Didn't have much to show for their first. In fact, they gave up the best chance during those two minutes. Almost a shorthanded goal for Caleb Kovac. And a hand pass called against Bethel Park. PT back on the PK. PT, it's early, but still unscored upon on the penalty kill this season. This is game number two. Both teams are 0-1. Bethel Park lost to Baldwin. 2-1. And Peters Township fell 8-1. A shocking scoreline there. Despite outshooting Pine Richland, they fell to the Rams. Seven-goal margin. Usually it's PT putting the hurting on teams in that fashion. So, uh, sure was a humble week of practice for Tingle's squad. A long-range drive from the outside. Comes right into the belly pad of Thomas. Jaden Teets took the shot for Bethel Park. Under four minutes to go. Now halting pace to the second period. Bethel Park would be happy to extend the game. The team that's trailing always likes to have the whistles. More face-offs usually means more chances to create something. Or at least slow down the team that's done better to that point. Nearly an opportunity for Kobe Ringwald to skate in shorthanded, but he couldn't poke it past the last defender for Bethel Park. Again, Peters Township, though, on the puck shorthanded, and at least they'll get it out to center, but a giveaway by Alexander. That's onto the stick of Nolan Plasio. But he left it behind, and Peters Township snaps it down and out. Caden Kazarowski doing the honors that time. 48 seconds left on the penalty to Cooper Slavin of Peters Township. 1-0 PT over Bethel Park. Peters Township in its home opener in 2021-22. Plasio has it poked off his stick. And again, a clear for Peters Township. One more should do it on this penalty kill. Camden Martin pressuring things up high. It's given away to McKenna, and McKenna saucers it down once more. Maxwell Kness on it here. Number five. He thought he had the first goal of this game. I'm still not sure what exactly happened, <laughs> but missed the net from a close distance. Teets. Just want to jam that one on net. He's now hacking away at one of the Peters Township defenders. No call upcoming, but the penalty is over. Slavin's on the ice, and we're back to five on five. Cassiola on his backhand, rolling into the offensive zone. Here's a sharp angle shot that's off the shoulder of Zavola. Good chance there from uh, Peters Township's Kness. Cassiola on the four check here. Couldn't get there in time. Now about two minutes to go in the second period. Gunther tripped. Will that be a penalty? It appears it will be, and PT is about to go shorthanded again. So just when the uh, home team got back on level footing, make it penalty kill number three upcoming. And I'm sure that's got to be a trip. Trip called against Chase Stouffer. Three penalties in this period for Peters Township. They'll be fortunate to escape with that one nothing lead. Not to besmirch the penalty kill, but eventually the attrition gets to you. It's hard work to kill off penalties. Henderson, fanned on that shot, though, for Bethel Park. Another face-off controlled by the Blackhawks. The pass goes right through the legs of Aaron All, but saved at the line by Colin Neville. Neville to Palacio. Back to Neville. Want to go cross rink. He has Henderson at the dot. In the middle, a shot, and it goes wide from All. Aaron All couldn't ask for a better setup than that one, but he missed. Palacio takes the saucer feed from Colin Neville. Henderson to Palacio. Center point. Palacio confronted there by Mally of Peters Township. 123 left on the power play. It'll run out just before the end of the period if PT gets the kill. And a backhand pass goes awry for uh, Bethel Park. And Plasio, and so the Blackhawks have to regroup again. Here's Plasio, got by one forward checker, but lost the puck in the process. Dumped down by Peters Township. So Bethel Park got some good offensive zone time, but still nothing to show. On power play number three for BP. 
Colin Neville. Skating, shooting, it hopped over Thomas's shoulder. Oh, nearly jumped into the net, but cleared with some help from his teammates. Didn't look like much, but some weird English on that one. A lot of velocity as well. And Peters Township will dump it down the ice again. I want to say it was William Tomko that time that took care of business. 30 seconds remaining in the period. 26 to go on the power play. Chase Stoffer off forward tripping. Stoffer the senior in his first varsity action this year. Tomko poking away, and Peters Township again. Wins control, bangs it off the boards, out to the Bethel Park zone, just six seconds left in the period, and ticking. Lucido, one last opportunity, he skates in 1v3, took a wild shot, wouldn't have taken that unless the time was running out, and he misfired to the left, and it just harmlessly skitters into the corner. That's it for the second period. Peters Township holding on to a 1-0 lead. After a goal from Ben Kovac, his first as a varsity player, on the assist from Camden Martin, even strength goal, that was early in the second period, nothing after that. We'll take a break here from Prince Scape Arena and bring it on back for the third period, who knows, and possibly more. Uh, this one has uh, all the feel of going down to the wire. Coming up, intermission, and then the final frame. We'll load 17 more minutes on the clock and see how this one finishes up. one nothing. Peter Township over Bethel Park from South Point. Back in a moment on PetersHockey.tv and BergHockey.com.
And we return to Prince Scape Arena in South Point, PA, broadcasting from two locations tonight on PetersHockey.tv and uh, BergHockey.com. I'm Matt Geico on the call from the great state of Michigan, the Wolverine State, Grand Rapids. I've relocated with my family, but uh, again, thanks to Todd Kazarowski and uh, his 10 band productions, we are pulling this thing off, I think, pretty darn well. And so is Peters Township, one nothing up over Bethel Park. Peters Township in pursuit of win number one in game number two this season, just the start of the year, as it's a part of a two-game week for PT. And uh, we present Peters Township Hockey once again uh, on this channel, on PetersHockey.tv, for the second consecutive season. And a uh, long tradition of broadcasting Peters Township Hockey, whether it be on uh, Peters Township Community Television or BergHockey.com. It's, it's been a really fun last five to six years. I thought my ride was over as as I moved, but we're going to figure this thing out, and uh, I'm just happy to provide the play-by-play, -play, however, and wherever, as it turns out, I can do it. The only goal on the board so far for Peters Township goes to Ben Kovac. Kovac, a rebound chance. You might have seen it there on the highlights that were rolling between periods after Camden Martin skated in. And there's going to be a secondary assist on that goal. I wasn't quite sure who made the cross rink feed. Um, it still is just the one assist on the official game sheet on PIHLHockey.com where you can follow along live. But neither here nor there. The important thing is it's one nothing, And we start the third period with Peters Township in possession of the puck, but with a little bit of trouble here as Ryder Mertens will double back in his own zone. Mertens, the leading returning scorer for Peters Township. 15 points last year, seven goals. Eight assists in 18 games. Nearly a point-per-game player, as was Austin Malley. For the most part, though, PT's figuring this one out on the fly as Thomas will make the save on the cutback shot. And uh, don't look now, but it appears that Kyle Thomas is finding his form, at least in this game he's put on quite the display. So far, everything has been stopped that's been shot his way. Bethel Park with now 15 shots on goal. Peters Township with 21. Bethel Park scored just one goal in its opening game. The loss to Baldwin, 2-1. to one. And it looks like we're looking at another lower-scoring type of affair here tonight. Mertens turning this way and that. Ryder Mertens instead uh, elects to just flip it out. Sometimes the simplest route is the best route, especially when you lead by one in the third period. Not that we're getting down to run out the clock time, but situational hockey is definitely at the forefront of most smart players minds in this situation just don't want to give anything easily away or cheaply away at this point want to honor your goaltender's effort for sure speaking of goaltender's efforts dominic zavola for bethel park i called a chance for maxwell kness of peters township as a, a missed chance and it was in the very technical way of putting it but Honestly, it was a great stop. An arm save from Dominic Zavola, and there is Kness shooting again, and there is again Zavola making a save. This one a little easier than the one I'm talking about. Happened in the second period just before PT broke through. Kness ended up putting his stick on top of his helmet, skating away in disbelief. I, honestly, you look at everyone in the stands that we can see on camera here. They were all standing and celebrating. The Peters Township bench was up and celebrating, but Zavola reached out with the right arm and just got the cuff of his blocker maybe on it. It was hard to even tell on that replay, uh, which are in high definition here on PetersHockey.tv. I may say so myself, but I was glad I got a second and a third look at that one. Maybe a penalty coming up here against Bethel Park as a chance for Cassiola goes creening wide. Kazarowski was yanked down, and yes, Kazarowski does draw the minor call against Bethel Park. Early here in period three, 15 10 to go in it. 17 minute periods in uh, PIHL high school hockey, if you're unfamiliar. Peters Township about to go on the power play for the second time tonight. Dimitri Geronimos, the guilty party for the Blackhawks, on the road tonight. But not too far from home, of course. And these South Hill schools play. Not a bad drive, whether it's Cannon Mac, which also calls this rink home, or Bethel Park, or Mount Lebo for that matter. Coming off the wall here with it, William Tomko, the freshman, couldn't get through. Rister from Ringwald and kicked out by Zavola. Tomko to Ringwald at the line. Ringwald hands it right back to Tomko. Tomko looking sharp as a freshman put it in front and it caroms in. 
That was an attempted pass. It might have gone on a, off a Black Hawk and into the goal. Either way, it's a power play goal for Peters Township and a 2-0 lead. Early stages, third period. And the way they're celebrating, I think this is going to be some friendly fire for Bethel Park. Yes, it was. It was off the defender who immediately closed out against Peters Township. Was that Ben Kovac again? We'll have to wait for the announcement, but it's a power play goal for Peters Township, and it's a two-goal bulge. <laughs> the all-important goal, biggest difference in hockey, in my opinion, is the difference between a one-goal lead and a two-goal lead, and Peters Township has successfully crossed that gap, especially early stages of a third period like this one. To make it two, that frees you up to... Honestly, not take too many chances. So we'll get the scoring officially. We've had a rebound goal, kind of an ugly one. That was definitely an ugly one, especially if you're a Bethel Park fan. And uh, the Blackhawks not getting the break on that. It just deflected off a skate or a stick, possibly both, and under Dominic Zavola, who couldn't have expected that, certainly. No infringement upon his night to give up that one. Although it hurts just as bad, I'm sure. Maybe even worse. Malley, a cutback move, and a wrist shot. Score! 3-0 Peters Township. What a rip from Malley upstairs under the crossbar. And there's a beauty. No need to put any lipstick on this pig. That's a gorgeous goal for Malley, his second of the season. Look at this replay as he takes a step inside and lets fire. And it was off the crossbar and in over the glove hand of Zavola. An even strength goal after a power play goal. And Peters Township has stretched the lead to three. And the second goal does go to Ben Kovac. Assist to Tomko and Ringwald. Two for Ben Kovac. One for Austin Malley. That math adds up to a 3-0 advantage for Peters Township. And a big hole for Bethel Park to climb out of now. Especially considering this is a team that just hasn't scored very many goals recently. But will there be a chance here on the power play? Yes, there will be for the men in black. Cross-checking the call. Referees working tonight's game. Yant and Buckholtz. Official scorer, Makievich. The scorekeeper, Georgiou. Just last names available for all those officials. Pardon me there. I always like to give the first names if I can. Especially for referees. They could use some humanization for sure as they take enough punishment. At any rate, the penalty to Kazaroski. Two for cross-checking at 1337. Or with 1337 left in the third period. Not as easy to do the at such and such a time when it's a 17-minute period. The math isn't quite as easy as when it's a 20-minute period. Here's a breakaway chance for Caleb Kovac, and the puck drifted off his stick. Second shorthanded golden chance for Peters Township in this game, but this time it doesn't even result in a shot on goal. Caleb Kovac had the last shorthanded chance, in fact, the other shorthanded chance in this game. It's all about the Kovacs tonight. And, of course, Malley, who got another one on the board, and here's a clear for Peters Township, killing off some more time on the Bethel Park power play. Kovac, that's Caleb Kovac, burrowing in deep, but out with it come the Blackhawks. To the outside, and Teets. Teets, shot, score! Okay, Bethel Park gets on the board on a nifty little move to the outside and a short side snipe. Bethel Park makes it 3-1 to one on the power play. Power play goal for Peters Township. Power play goal for Jaden Teets and the Bethel Park Blackhawks. The floodgates are open, maybe. 3-1, to one. still with the majority of this third period to play. If you're a fan of attacking hockey, you got to love that flinch move from Jaden Teets, who had six goals last season, gets on the board here this season. Teets, the senior, he fainted like he was moving inside, maybe trying to cut to the middle, and that always will get a defender to, to bite at least a little bit, but then he just kept it on the forehand, and... Honestly, fooled Thomas as well, who left his post just enough to give Teets the room to shove it home. Merton's trying to catch up to this puck. Uh, pardon me, that was uh, Camden Martin. Martin, one of the offensive contributors in this game for Peters Township with an assist on his drive to the goal in the second period. It's 3-1, as you see there on your screen. 
three goals in the opening, not even five minutes of this third period. Two for Peters Township, one for Bethel Park. Out to the line and a wrist shot. And now Bethel Park, if they get the next one, then it's really interesting at Prince Skate. Tempted shot from Christian Strang, didn't get through. Uh, Peters Township player ends up on his knees and a tripping call coming up. And this one looks like it's going to go against Bethel Park, putting Peters Township on the PP once again with 11.51 remaining in the third period. Bethel Park's Christian Strang, who just had the chance to shoot, and I don't know if there was some frustration there after the missed opportunity or what, but he ends up tripping one of the Tribe. So here we go. Just after a power play conversion, Mally will shoot one. Oh, what a good look from between the circles, but he couldn't get that on net. Might have been blocked. Ringwald, wristing wide of the goal. Big rebound off the end boards, and the Blackhawks will be on it first. Some havoc there early in the power play, and here's Teets. Pressing the issue. He's going to have to now. Of course, the priority is to kill the penalty, but Bethel Park's going to take every opportunity to try to make something happen shorthanded. Mertens with a man on his back. Guided the puck into the corner. Keeping it as Alexander at the line and ripped one that hit something in front. Zavola reacted as if it was coming through with the blocker hand, but it didn't get there. Ringwald shot. Deflected on the way. Mertens tried to pounce on it, but couldn't poach the goal. Now Mertens again. Finds the puck left circle. Ringwald out by the line. Ringwald to Ryder Mertens. Mertens the junior. Blow the goal line. Gets it back. Shot it. And into some legs. And wide of the goal. Alexander. Carson Alexander pinched up. You know that last name Alexander if you followed Peters Township Hockey for any length of time. It is once again a family affair. In Peters Township with the Kovacs. Alexander. Ringwald. Previously had brothers on the team. I think that's it. I'll have to scan the roster a little more closely. Oh, Cooper Slavin. How could I forget? He's also part of the uh, <laughs> the legacy of families playing for Peters Township. Well, good job here from Bethel Park, keeping the puck in the offensive zone at least. Luke Henderson spun it in deep. One on three battle. And the Blackhawks aren't going quietly into that Tuesday evening. Still 3-1, now just under 10 minutes to go in the third. Peter Township led 1-0 coming into this third period. We've had some action, some serious offensive action, at least, early in this frame. Power play is over for Peter Township. And this will be a nice thing call against Gotham Park as that clear came right out. Bethel Park again with the puck after a face-off win. Chance potentially for Aiden Gorman, but he couldn't get through everybody. He had one last player to beat and uh, couldn't slide the puck past Kimberling. Snapshot from the far side wall. Missed the goal. Into the corner. Now flip from the half boards by Plasio. Unable to connect with the teammate. Dimitri Geronimos, the backhand hoist. Peters Township on it again. And this goes for an icing against PT. 9.03 left in the third. You have to figure one more goal might put this one away for Peters Township. It looked like it was at least halfway in the barn when Mally scored just after Ben Kovac got his second of the game. The two teammates scoring goals less than a minute apart, 40 seconds apart, give or take. Camden Martin over the offensive blue line, but Peters Township's offside. They got to go tag up if they want to prevent the whistle and keep play moving. Sometimes team leading in this situation might not want to do that, but they did. The thing is, you have to watch for the intentional offside, which would bring the faceoff back into your own zone. So there's maybe a happy medium there to... At least delay a little bit, but not too much to make it blatant. On the chase back for Bethel Park, it's Jude Kozak guiding it along the walls. Dominic Zavola swats that puck away from the front of his crease. The goaltender for Bethel Park 
Side of the net. Chance. Zavola has to make a save there. That opportunity came out of nothing for Peters Township. Courtesy of William Tomko. But Zavola made the stop. And if you're doing three stars tonight, for me, Zavola's got to be one of them. He has shined brightly for Bethel Park. And I'm sure the Hawks happy to have him back in the fold. I mentioned he played for them two years ago, then took last year off, as some players did due to the circumstances. Malley wanted to hop right by the check of Jake Lang, but couldn't do it. That was a soft little pass from Ryan McKenna that nearly made something happen. Wide rush for Bethel Park leads to nothing. The puck caroms out to center, and a player going to the net. That's Cooper Slavin, but the puck never got to him. Now it'll come to him. No, it won't. It was broken up at the last second with Mertens attempting the setup. Malley behind the goal. He and Mertens kind of in each other's personal space there. A little too close. You like puck support, maybe not that much puck support. Mertens, though, will take it for Peters Township to the line. Uh, half slapper on the way from the blue line that hopped over the net after a deflection. Seven and a half to play in the third period. Peters Township, less than half a period away from their first win of the season. For checking is Chase Stoffer, but could
Okay, can I zoom? Sure, yeah. How do I do it? <laughs> end of uh, tonight's broadcast the rink internet at uh, prince cape arena let us down and uh, so the final seven and a half minutes you'll have to recreate in your imagination final score is peters township three and bethel park one peters township likes its first win of the season on home ice and its home opener and we'll uh, try to carry that positive feeling into thursday's game at central catholic at the alpha ice complex in harmerville bethel park meanwhile falls to zero and two having scored just two goals in its first two games. Yeah. Peters Township with a nice rebound from that 8-1 uh, loss to Richmond last week. Coming up next at this rink, in fact, tonight, internet willing.